the the nice air. Like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, man, that bitch the hood, bro. Like the whole city is the hood, bro. Like <laughs> east, west, no, you know what I'm saying? North end, southwest, like it's, it's just the all, hood, bro. It's just like, on the hood. That shit just the hood, bro. Like you can't even really, cause I know, I know, I got ties to every side, so yeah. I didn't been around. I didn't been places that most niggas don't go out, you know, cause Detroit is trying to set up like most niggas. If they from the east side, they stay on the east side. If they from the west side, they stay on the west side. They from okay. North End, they stay on there. They from Southwest, they stay Southwest down under all that shit over there. You feel me? So like. Right. It's sectioned off like this. So that's like how most people in the city move. Like every now and then you got people like me who could, you might catch me down that way. You know what I'm saying? Right, you right, right. Catch me up this way. So, right. Yeah. I, uh, it's kind of like that too out here, bro. But ours is a little more. You ever been to California? You ever been to LA before? I've been there, bro, briefly, though. It wasn't, I ain't get a chance to really get around and, and get my feet wet. But I, I, I tapped in on time. I slid through. Understood. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta tap back in, man. It's a little bit different, man. But what, what's the difference between you got seven mile, eight mile? What, what is that? Is that a street? That's like a, a community. Yeah, there, is like, it? yeah, that's them streets, them streets, uh, them streets and them hoods, them streets uh, and them hoods. You okay. feel me? So, so like, it's crazy because they literally a mile away from each other. Oh, uh, seven mile, eight mile. How many miles? Is it seven and eight? That's the ones we got, I hear. No, we got like, okay, so like in Detroit, you got, now they call Finkel five mile. I don't okay. know if you familiar with like payroll and. Yeah, payroll, uh, Giovanni. Come on, yeah, man. Come on, man. I'm all like, on the D. Yeah, you know that, that whole way, if you feel me. I know, yeah. they fuck with, I know y'all fuck with them on Kelly Heavy, but. You already like, know. for five miles. You feel me? He from Five Mile. And then, like, McNichols, I'm trying to think. It's some bang. I know you know Bang Gang. Yeah, some of them, yeah. they from Six Mile. You feel oh, me? So, Six okay. Mile. And then, like, a mile up, you got Seven Mile. You know, Sada Baby and, you know what I'm saying, a whole bunch of people Seven Mile. Uh, then you got Eight Mile. Uh-huh. And then, after, when you cross Eight Mile, it's the sub. It's like kind of like the suburbs. You're in a whole nother city, whole nother... You know what I'm saying? So like eight mile, it kind of I, I I guess you could say it stop at like five mile. Mm. But it's more hood. It's like it's just crazy, bro. You have to get here. Like it's kinda hard to explain, but we like we don't have like it's 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 hoods. Like you got hoods and you got streets. That's kinda like what separate us, divide us. And you saying in every mile, like the fifth and the sixth is a mile from each other, the sixth and the seventh is a mile from each other too. Yeah, yeah, six miles, seven miles, uh, eight miles. That's a trip. So that okay. So I I can kind of see how that one block you can control that whole one mile radius area. Yeah, and you got halfway points too. You feel me? So it's like mm. for like over in my hood, like for instance, like out of drive is the halfway point. So like once you cross out of drive, you over you you basically over there with eight mile. You know what I'm saying? You on okay. eight mile side. You feel me? If you okay. on this side of out of drive, you on seven mile side. You feel me? Um, you know what I'm saying? So it's like that. Yeah, but it, it, it Yeah. Is is it tension between the well, I mean it, I guess it is, but I you know, I don't really know the details, but I'm sure is is it some type of tension between the miles or everybody? Yeah, hell yeah. Like and that oh, shit deep seated. You right, feel okay. me? Like that shit, like this nigga's been beefing since I was a kid. Like niggas still beefing. Like, still beefing. Yeah, like that like that shit. You know what I'm saying? It be some, it, it's some beef behind that shit. You know what I'm saying? But me, I got, I got, you know what I'm saying? I got six mile niggas. I got seven mile niggas. I got eight mile niggas. I got, I, don't know, I got niggas all over. But the city, the niggas that I fuck with, my, you know what I'm saying? That I, that I got personal relationships with. Yeah. That's love. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, real recognize real. So. Understood. And you know what's so crazy too, bro? Because in your music, when I'm listening to it, you got to, your style now, what you know, is is different than the new Detroit sound. You feel me? And it's almost like you don't even carry yourself like like you own that bullshit. You feel me? Like you you don't even carry yourself with that energy. So it's almost like how could somebody beef with you or be mad at you? Because your energy is just like one hundred. They don't. You know what I'm saying? Not saying you probably yeah. a bust a nigga head, but your energy is just. You know what I'm saying? 
is yeah, no, but that that, 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 mean, that makes a lot though. That means a lot though. You feel right. me? Like when you said that, that lets me know that I'm giving off the right energy and the right vibes. Cause you know what I'm saying? I'm from a city where it's too easy to get into some bullshit. It's too easy to get caught up in bullshit. It's too e like uh, it, it's just, I guess you know what I'm saying. And I, and I want that though, cause I don't want nothing but positivity coming my way. So. I guess I'm making the right type of music then if that's the energy that I'm giving off because, you know what I'm saying, I, I just like real shit, bro. Right. I ain't one of them niggas that just the fake, the facade. I like real shit, bro. So, you know what I'm saying, I feel like my music is most felt when it's coming from me at a genuine standpoint. I, hey, I agree, bro, because most of my artists, that's why I connect to them more on a, I'm on the emotional level than, than just strictly skill, you feel what I'm saying? But uh, being from you being from Seven Mile, what high school is that? What high school did you go to? So I went to uh, I went to I went to Persian High School on the east side. On the east Seven side, Mile. what was yeah. cracking that Persian? Was it turned up? Oh, you probably had all the yeah. females anyway. Yeah, that bitch was wild. A lot of people was wild. I went to two high schools too. I went to Persian mm -hmm. uh, my ninth grade year, and then uh, my my bird snatched me up out that bitch because. I'll I'll I was doing too much. Wait, you said your bird? What's your bird? What's your bird? What you talking about? Your bird. Oh, that's, your my, that's my that's what we call our OG, our mom dukes. We call our Oh, that's a Detroit shit. That's a Detroit shit, yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm like his that's bird. Like what? Yeah, okay. so like my you know what I'm saying, my OG or whatever, that's what we call it too. Like she she seen like oh that's my neighborhood school. You feel right. me? Right, okay. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I knew everybody, so I'm always in the mix and always in some shit. So, right, she like she like let me send your ass somewhere where you don't know nobody. You know what I'm saying? So, she sent my ass on the west side. Oh, and then you had to start fresh. Ain't no nobody over there. Man, that shit was different, bro. <laughs> I don't lie. Hey, that it, that the, the east and the west is dip, like the east. The west side of Detroit way different than the east. Yeah, they different. They different as hell. It's the it's um, still a hood or some shit, or it's like the suburbs. Hell, see, this is the trick. See, the west side is tricky, bro. Mm -hmm. Because you'll go over to the west side, right? And you will see these big ass houses, yeah, these nice ass houses, these uh -huh. nice ass lawns. And yeah, <laughs> you be like, damn, you feel? I'm when we I'm when we move to the west side, right? You feel me? We move to the west side. I'm like, damn, this shit. You feel me, niggas? Like, yeah. You got it confused. You still in the hood, bro. Don't get it twisted. Them <laughs> niggas just, them niggas just, the difference is, them niggas just trapping out of $250,000 houses and shit. Like, it's still, the, like, it's crazy, bro. You niggas hey. still getting dropped. Shit still going sideways. Shit still going left. Niggas still turned wild on all that. It had you tripped out. That's it had me fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I'm, a, I'm an east side nigga, so yeah. we, we will be considered on the, in Detroit like the, the grimy niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the, you feel me? Like, this, there used to be the difference between the east side nigga and the west side nigga is the east side nigga was the nigga to be in dicky fits. You know what I'm saying? East side niggas love dicky suits, but they got mm -hmm. 10, 20,000 on them. Uh huh. They ain't really, they ain't really, they ain't really vibing on all of the, the you know what I'm saying? All of the other the shit. They like that. They, they just want to have that chicken. They do what the fuck they want to do. They move how they want to move. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. them niggas thug me. On the west side, them niggas shiny as fuck. So you they the west side. Yeah, they... West side niggas Gucci down, Louis down. They got that roll on them too, but like they just really flashy over there. So it was a whole nother damn near like a whole nother world when I went over there. You know uh, what I'm saying? Like when I went over there, nigga, it was like, what the fuck? Like this shit different. You feel me? Like, it was a culture shock. Yeah, it was definitely a culture shock. Being from the East and going, like, over there, because yeah, all I knew was the East. Right, right, you right. You know what I'm saying? When, when you grow up somewhere, all you know is your section, your hood, you know, where you from. You don't really know shit else. So then somebody just snatch you from your comfort zone and throw you in this shit. So you really, you going from a East Side school to a West Side school, you know you don't know nobody for real. You don't be knowing what the fuck to expect in that bitch. You know what's so funny you said that? Because, <laughs> look... The trip this the east side of LA, like where they call because we got a certain part that's east LA, which is uh -huh. separate from the east side of you know, uh, south central LA. The east side of south LA is different from east LA, right? So, like, okay, so like out here, the east you got Watts and all of that, 
they consider the east side the grimy, the little more dirtier part of the city. You know what I'm That's saying? That's crazy. Same thing. You feel me? The east, because the east side, on the east side, like in Watts, we got the projects. So okay. most of the projects is on the east side or in Watts. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, uh, okay. And Watts is on the east side, but they, and then the west side is you go over there, you see the green grass, you see the home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Most it, it's a bunch, it's like a it's a bunch of bad ass kids that granny or grandparents just have money, but they still with all of the same and they create still on all of it. Right. The east side, you might seem grinding and he might be hustling and he might have the same outfit on two, three days. A west side nigga gonna look like he just got his hair cut every other day, changed yeah, he gonna look like that. That's how it is, bro. That's yeah. how it is here, bro. It's but you know it's so crazy though. Know, it's a new East Side nigga now. It's a whole new shit that kind of swapped a little bit. Like I'm seeing more West Side niggas now in Nike jogging suits now. Like damn, that's some East Side shit. Like you catch the East Side niggas some white ones in the Nike joggy all day. That's that's trap wear. You feel me? Like oh, that's the, okay. I got you. Mm. You feel me? So now I'm starting to see that shit on the West. So I'm like, all right. You feel me? Like. She and then now the East Side niggas is Gucci down, Louis down, Dior down. Like me, shit, I'm a fresh ass East Side nigga. I, I, yeah. I, I take off on niggas when they come that drip shit. So I, well, yeah, when I'm I in the room, they don't know where I'm from unless you know me. They don't know if I'm from the East Side or the West. They can't. I be fucking them up. They don't know where I'm from. They be like, damn, this nigga. He bleeds, yeah, I don't live on both sides. Hey, let me ask yeah. you this. Let me ask you this. You went to two high schools, right? At when, mm -hmm. when did you start? Right? When did the rap come into play? Bro, rap started in like elementary school, bro. Oh damn! What was you doing? You was you was writing music. You was doing poetry. What you started? Doing? I started. Yeah, it started from poetry. I okay. was like elementary school. Then went from poetry to me actually writing raps for mm -hmm. real. I started that shit when I was about nineteen years old. Then from there, I started freestyling, and then I fuck around and became like I, I ain't even tell nobody I rap though for a long time though. That was like some secrets and secrets of shit I was doing like behind when nobody was around. Right. I'd be rapping and writing and shit. So I did that for a minute, bro. Up until I was like, up until I felt like I was ready to be compete with niggas and be on that one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I started letting niggas know I rap part like when I got to middle school, maybe a little bit after like maybe like right before, right before high mm -hmm. school probably. But by that time I was sweet already. I was already It was already packaged, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. No lie. Like, by the time I got to high school, bro, it was probably, like, maybe one or two niggas that could fuck with me. Like, no matter what age, bro, no matter what age group they was in, they no matter touch what, you. <laughs> fuck with me. Understood. Because I know at that time when you started rapping, because Drake your favorite artist, right? Yeah, he one of them, for sure. He definitely, what? he my yeah. overall, my overall, yeah, that would have to be him, overall. Oh. But he wasn't. He wasn't. Well, he wasn't out. When, was he out when you started rapping? No, hell no, no. He was. <laughs> I mean, like he was out, but like, okay, so he was out when I started really like taking it super serious. Okay, bad, bad, bad. So that's what I would have to say, because he was, he was already, you know what I'm saying? When he was pop, like starting to really take off his shit. That's when I really, like, probably like a year or two before that. That's when I really started like really working, like really like, all right, it's time to tighten up on shit. So who okay at that time when you started, who was you listening to? Who, who was your 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 your, your inspiration? Was it just? Man, I got you know Blade? what I take so Ice Blade Wood or something? Ice wasn't that? What's the what's, what's hell the, yeah Blade? Hell yeah, Blade. Yeah. hell yeah, you know Blade. Yeah. What you Come mean? On, I'm man. a seven mile baby. Yeah, you know I fuck with Blade Ice Wood. Man. Yeah, there with you go. Yeah. yeah, hey man, I'm a seven mile nigga though. That come that's like. That's like giving. <laughs> Blade is hard. Not, no cap, bro. Blade is seven my nigga Tupac, bro. I ain't lying. Okay, Blade, okay. Got you. Who else was you listening to? Shit, back then, early as hell, I was listening to Big Hurt. Okay. Yeah, another local artist from Detroit, Fire Ass. That's who I got. That's who I started, like, really tapping into him, tapping into Cassidy, tapping into Fab. All right. J.M. Like, I don't know if you know, I got that. I got that bar, that word play, that bar game crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how deep you looked into my music, but you know what I'm saying? Like, lyrical wise, I get, in, I get in that ring with the best of them. You know what I'm saying? So, 
I was listening to them. And then uh I don't know, man, when the when the when the music shit shifted mm-hmm. to the to the singing, rapping type. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? With the more melodic shit. Yeah, when they switched over to the melodic shit, mm-hmm. you know, niggas was listening to heavy future, heavy, you know what I'm saying, Migos. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Thug. Yeah. Oh yeah, you 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 uh you you rock with NBA and Kodak too, right? Hell yeah, I fuck with both of them. They hard. Okay. NBA and Kodak, they hard. Got you. Girl, like that. Yeah. Now um now now let me ask you this, man. Wait, what's them them buff you got on? Yeah, white ones. <laughs> oh, wait, they go the white buff. They go by the the, the color of the uh the uh the band. The horn, yeah, the, the horn. horn. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, yeah. man. I, you know, I don't, I don't wear buffs. You know, I don't, I don't wear glasses. Like, yeah, what's man. the whole? Because I, I don't watch the movie, man. Shout out to the boy Murder Pain, man. Oh uh, yeah, shout <laughs> out to Murder Pain. Hey, but look, what's the whole? Jackpot the juice. What's the whole ordeal behind the buffs? What is what, what is that? What's that about? Damn, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. The buffs is the holy grail of glasses, bro. Right. You feel me, mm-hmm. like nigga, like. Once you get a pair of these bitches, you don't even give a fuck about no other pair of glasses, bro. Just that's it. Once you once you put them once you put them black or them white buffs on your face, bro, it's like no other fucking pair of glasses matter, bro. It's over. Like it's, <laughs> it's over, bro. It's like and then here, here that's a that's a stamp. You know what I'm saying? Understood. Here, like you can't, that's a stamp here. Mm-hmm. Like you got you got a pair you got a pair of white ones, nigga. That mean like all right, this nigga. You know what I'm saying, but it's also it could be tricky too. That shit could be a tag too. You feel me? It's 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 shaky. You know what I'm saying, nigga? Take your head off a pair of these bitches if you caught if you caught lacking and you ain't. You know what I'm saying? And hey, I I seen I remember seeing some videos people getting robbed for their glasses. And you know I'm from California. And I'm I'm really sitting back thinking like these niggas really robbing and shooting niggas for glasses. I couldn't. Bro. It he's the ones sense. that he's it, bro. I ain't kept the one, it, bro. <laughs> it, bro. That's one. a boss stand though. And I ain't gonna lie, them bitches do whatever the like here, bro. Like if you hear like just particularly now, you know what? And there's other places too that they see it and they be, you know, so they be on it. They they can tell. But here in particular, bro, I swear the guys like with these bitches on, it ain't no bitch you gonna say not like no. Like, I don't think it's a, like, it's hard for a bitch to say no to you when you got buffs on. It's hard, bro. It's like, you know what I'm so, It's just hard for a bitch to say no. It's like, that shit crazy. I, I thought it was cat. Uh-huh. I thought it was cat. So I threw them bitches on. You getting the bitch face. It don't matter who the bitch is. And they going yeah. for it. They going. Off a pair of glasses. These bitches got a 90% conversion rate. <laughs> Hey, the bus is automatically going. You got a man. 90% chance to crack something when you get, hey, man, man that's, listen, man. that's always been the thing, or when did that start, bro? Man, that shit been like this, bro, for as long as I can remember, bro. Like, man, like, I had, I've been having yays, bro, like, damn, my whole life, damn, there, bro, right. like. Wires, woods, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And even then, like back in, you know what I'm saying? When I was younger, you feel me? It was still, yeah. it was like that then. It's it was just like, what it was. was. It's just what it was, bro. But it's just like, you ain't wearing them if you ain't nobody with no respect. You ain't got no hitters with you. You ain't laying like that. Because nigga, get at you about them bitches. That's you know what I'm saying? Real. You ain't, for real. So it's like, if you like, niggas already know, like, nigga, the buffs come with the stick. Come with it. <laughs> it's like a kit, the buff kit, huh? The come, the, the buffs come with the ladder, bro. Ooh, the buff kit. Buff Got a 30 on him. It's that crazy. That bitch come with the ladder, bro. Ain't nobody, bro. Listen here. Niggas God, ain't playing. Dang. God. Hey, but Dude. I always wonder, man, you wearing buffs. Niggas is still wearing buffs in the snow, too? It don't matter, bro. Hell, sleet of snow. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, hey. sleet of snow. You're. <laughs> Right. Hey, what the hell is that weather like, man, out there? How y'all deal with the snow, bro? I, uh, I, I couldn't do it. Bitch. Man. The blizzard is that it? shit, bro. This shit a bummer. That's why I be I be gone. I be taking flights. I be getting the fuck out, bro. I be gotcha. uh, I be trying to get low. 
as soon as I can go change my scenery as much as possible. Because it's just, that's weather, bro. It's flip flopping. Now, summertime, this shit, pumping. It's bumping. It's, it's pumping. Great. Listen, bro. Detroit in the summertime is wow. It's turned. <laughs> turned to the max. You uh, feel me? To right. the max. Like, it's nothing like a it's nothing like a classic ass Detroit summer, bro. Like, man, them bitches be crazy. But in the wintertime, mm-hmm. it's grind season. Niggas in niggas in grind mode, bro. Niggas all the you know, niggas go out, have fun when they want to, but summertime, wintertime really be like stack season. Understood. Like everybody be trying to stack so they can come out in the summer, you know what I'm saying? You know how that goes. Understood. I want to let me switch it up a little bit, man. I don't want to get too dark, but I, I don't want to be on it too long. But I got the action. 10 19 19. That was a, a specific day for you. That was the that was the day. You said, Can you hear me? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I couldn't. Uh... Can I do Oh, we'll go this way. Okay, this. Better for me. There we go. Bam, there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, we in the car. I was yep, saying 10 19 19 was a was a, a, a crazy day for you, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, it, it was that that's yeah. the that's the inspiration behind the, the, the song My Brother. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was day my brother. That was the day my brother passed away. You feel me? So, mm-hmm. that was a real uh, yeah. rough moment for me. Yeah, I uh, shit, I understand that. I, you know what? That's crazy too, because you know I just lost some a couple people last night. But uh, what's so crazy? Oh yeah, thank you. But what's so crazy is though. Um. How you was saying you kind of made that song just for you and your loved ones. It wasn't really supposed to be out to nobody. But what made you really just say, I'm going to just put the song out and let everybody hear it? The family, bro. The family. The family mm. and my friends and all of them, they did that, bro. Because like I told you, when I made the record, it was out for like, so you passed in October, November, December. It was out all November and December. Right. All you know, the rest of October, November, and December, it was out before I even put it out. Like I gave it to them. And they just right. it kept circulating. People kept asking me and I started getting new followers and this just a whole lot of where that song, where that song? Everybody kept asking, where the song? And I'm like, well. At, it got to the point where I had to start directing people to uh, my cousin Vapes. Like, hey, you want the song? Go holler at her. Like, you feel me? It, it wasn't for everybody. Like I said, like, if you didn't know, if you didn't know, bro, personally, you didn't know me, you wasn't a part of the fam, you wasn't family or some shit. Nah, it wasn't for you. It wasn't until it started becoming like, it started going down there viral through a text message, bro. Mm. Like, people calling me. People calling me like, bro, I'm on the, I'm on the east side. I ain't playing your shit. In the gas station, I'm like, damn, all right, you know what I'm saying, like, bro, I'm over here playing your shit here. I'm like, damn, like, motherfuckers really like fuck yeah. with. Me. And my cousin was like, you need to put this out, Jay. Like, I'm like, I don't know, bro, because I, I be knowing. I'm like, I don't know. She's like, no, I'll put this shit out. I'm like, all right, fuck it, I'm, let's, let's do it. So I put it out on YouTube just mm-hmm. to see, just to give it a test run. Man, that shit started going crazy. So. When I got to like four thousand motherfucking uh, views on YouTube with just the audio and the click, like the thing, yeah, I'm like, damn, like I, this is organic. Like I told you, I didn't do none of this shit. You feel mm. me? Like this is all just, just off of what was already going on with the record and how it was touching everybody. So mm. finally, I, I started promoting it and shit like that. And then I'm like, all right, so they're like, bro, put this on Spotify. I'm like, all right, fuck it, let's. Let's go ahead and, you know, get it together. Release it. So I released it. Mm-hmm. It was still going up. Now, this, by this time, I'm like, all right, well, evidently, this is something that everybody fucking with. Yeah. And you go out here and, and, you know what I'm saying, hit the gas on it. So I just hit the gas on it. I did the video on his birthday. Mm-hmm. Uh, even then, after the video, I was still tucked it. 
I did the video in December. That's what y'all find out. I Damn. did the video in December, but mm -hmm. I didn't even drop it until the next year, of March. Damn, you held it. I held because one, I directed the video. Right. <laughs> you direct all your videos, right? For the people that yeah. don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I direct all my videos. Cut, mm -hmm. well, you know what I'm saying? I give the scenery to, you know what I'm saying, the female, everything. I do all of that and, you know what I'm saying, work with the videos. Get him the imagery, let him get the shots, you know what I'm saying, and let him, you know what I'm saying, do his, you know what I'm saying, his work, his editing. But that's how I work with all the videographers. I get them everything they need to be able to, you know what I'm saying, paint my picture. Understood. Yeah, so when I dropped the video, the, um, I held on it for like two, three months, bro, because I, I knew, I knew. You I felt it? I knew, yeah. Mm. Oh, this bitch gonna blow. And it scared me a little bit. Mm. Because it was like, once I let this bitch go, once I, you know what I'm saying? Once I fired you can't it, pull it fired back. Shot, it's over. I you can't, can't pull it back. back. Nope. You know what I'm saying? I can't pull it back. So I had to do it right. You know what I'm mm. saying? It was strategically how I did it. You know what I'm saying? But when I did it, I had a gut feeling. That's what took me so long to release it. Because I'm like, man, I don't want to keep seeing this shit every day. Because I knew once I released it, I was going to see that every day. Ain't going to have to deal with it every day. Mm, yeah, every day. I've seen it. I've seen my brother video or a clip or a snippet or a repost or something every single day. And you can't run from it. Since I dropped it in March. Do I you get that every day. Do you try to embrace it or because only reason why I ask you that because do you understand why people feel it? Like you don't look, bro. Everything about the song, in my opinion, is dead on point. It's so relatable. The as soon as you, I didn't lost my dog, my right hand man played the cards that I was dealt, and I don't even got a hand. Came a long way from pushing. What you say from uh selling uh cause there was a, uh to, trying to come up on the band in a minute, cool. trapping yeah. out the mini van, trying to come up with yeah, come on, man. And then when you especially when you hit him with the uh when you say uh on the hook uh. That's my brother. That's my round. He gonna ride for me. If the pressure ever is on, he gonna slide for me. Hold you down to my to fucking man. Don't get your head knocked off because we locked in. You my brother. I'm gonna promise if I catch you, if we fuck. When you say, when you hit him with that, look, when you hit him with that line, when you told him, nigga, uh, 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 if me and my brother ever come to odds, nigga, don't nobody get involved because we might turn on you just to get that problem solved. Man, you know how many times when you said that? You know how many times I said, oh, no, nah, let me start the hook over. Oh, cat, bro. I start the whole hook over, really bro. Like, that's how that shit was really laying. Like, me and my baby used to be like, butt heads all the time, but you can't get in between it. Yeah, nah, you, come on, bro. Listen. And niggas knew, and niggas know, niggas knew, though. Like, mm -hmm. go ahead and let Jay and bro hash that shit out. They always go through their little whatever, whatever. Right. But they not going to get in between that shit because they already know. You be like, what the fuck, nigga? You feel yeah. me? Like we instantly would be off our, we'd be off of each other and be on your ass. Oh my mama! Oh, so that's 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 just how that shit really was, bro. I couldn't. That wasn't no. That shit was real, bro. That yeah, shit real. Wasn't no fake. Wasn't no gimmick. Wasn't no nothing. You know what's so funny about the video, man? Is because, and it's not even funny. You know, I don't. You know, but the little girl that was sitting on the porch, the the, the yeah, no my niece. That's your niece. She was yeah, sick. Yeah, Oh, snaps, man. Shout out to her, man. She was, hey, she knew, she like, she knew the whole song, boy. She was singing she her do. Yeah. Do. I was she tripped every song. And she I see, so, so you was really, was you really um, sponsored by Patron? Um, I actually was sponsored um, by a company called Gateway, who okay. sponsored me. Um, for Patron, through Patron, I guess I Patron. So, yeah, the company Gateway sponsored me. Um, they sponsored my Patron Don Julio. So, shout yes. out to Gateway, by the way. Appreciate y'all. And you had that uh, that that rocker, that Patron. Yeah, man. Nay, nay, man. That's Goggy Juice. That was my brother's favorite drink, bro. Oh, that that's Goggle's favorite drink. Yeah, the Patron R. Nail. RP, man. RP, 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 my baby and it's crazy. I fought this nigga tooth and nail. Do you hear me? Listen, uh -huh. me and him used to get into it because I like, I like Reposado. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I like. I ain't gonna lie. I used to fuck with Green Box too. We be Green Box crazy, but we left. I left the Green Box alone. I started liking Reposado, right? Uh huh. 
fucking, his nigga was a nail drinker. You feel me? He yeah. straight Nate. I'm talking about me and this nigga. We get into it. You like, I ain't buy that, bud. That, it, 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 I don't <laughs> want that chick. You know, that chick tastes like, all right, bro, we used to be on that, like, for real. So. <laughs> yeah. When he died, I'm like, all right, you win. It's <laughs> Mayo from here on out. Like, all right, nigga, you won. That's all right, nigga. I, ain't about to, I, I, I retired the Reposado and went straight Mayo after that. I ain't mad at you, man. That's pretty dope. Man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a, I'm a Don Julio type of dude myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Don Don, man. That Don Don. Don, Don. Don, Don. Come on, man. That Don Don. And then look, let me ask you this, man. You went from um, you went from that, and then my another my song favorite song too that I like is uh that you got it stuck in my ways. What was the whole concept of of that? You know, a, a stuck in my ways, bro. Where did that come from? Was that a true story? Because it kind of stuck um, in my way. Things tend to say the same. I'm a man. I'm a word. I would try to make a change. Try to mend a broken heart. Why are you patching up the pain? All I ask is don't judge. I done been through some things. That shit like, real, like you bro. done fucked up. <laughs> real, bro. Hey, that's what I'm saying. It sounds like you had a girl and fucked it up. Yeah, hey, bro. I, I, fuck, I ain't gonna hold you up, bro. Like me, Man, me and relationships ain't been the best of friends. Let's put it oh, like that. Understood. You feel me? So, um, you know what I'm saying? When you got something and you you in fear of losing it, and you know it's something that's worth keeping, sometimes you self reflect, mm-hmm. and that's that's what that was for me. That was me understanding my shortcomings, understanding my flaws. You feel me? But also understanding that I'm worth it. And also understanding that you feel me like I'm like this because of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I pretty much tell you in the song, if you really listen to it for word for word, I tell you why I got trust issues. I tell you why I don't fuck with nobody. I tell you why I'm stuck in my ways. But I also tell you that I understand this ain't always the right way to be, and I might need to do some changing. So that's what that was. That was just me, really. That's like, damn, that's like the toxic nigga man in the mirror, bro. It's just really make you look at yourself. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, we forget to do that a lot, bro. We forget to do that. You know what I'm self saying? Self reflection. We, we really is, self reflection and self awareness is, is a cold thing, boy. But um, Facts. And we forget to do it a lot. We forget to do that, man. We 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 go day by day. People do bullshit. Mm-hmm. Don't even be realizing that everything you do causes another effect on something else. That that's a big fact. You know that's a fact. Bro. People move around. People move around and don't and don't even be conscious of the shit that's going on and what they're doing and how they affect the next person. But they're not really. They really focus on themselves. It's a lot of for self people out here. You know what I'm saying? You just got to make the conscious decision whether you're gonna peep it, acknowledge it, and remove yourself from it, or are you gonna indulge and deal with it. Me, I'm the type of nigga. If I see you flaw or I see something, man, remove myself. I agree with you on that uh, totally, a hundred percent. Because it's it's hard to to maneuver and, and and find people that's not just for themselves. You know, that's why, like for me, you taking the time out to even just do this interview with me and don't even know a man from a can of paint just strictly off a DM, it it, it mean a lot to certain people. You know, because like for me, I feel like like shout out to my boy Kato. My boy Kato would say. You got people that look out for you when nobody is looking. And this, I feel like, is a prime example of that. You feel what I'm saying? You Somebody looking out for you when nobody is looking. You know what I'm saying? And I, it, it's not a lot of people that's like that. You know? You, you probably got... I'm sure you've seen it since your song blew up. You probably got people around you that, that'll that say happy birthday to a celebrity that they've never met before they even repost your video. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, them people, let me tell you about the funny you said that about those type of people. Mm-hmm. Them type of people, they mad right now. Mad. Yeah, they mad right now. They can't get they can't get around me. They can't get next to me. Mm. You can't even get around. Yo, you ain't you ain't for the win. You can't even get around me no more. I'm un, I'm unreachable if you ain't if it ain't nothing that's gonna contribute towards my success or something. 
some encouragement or some push or some drive or something I can hold on to to make me a better man. If you ain't in that whole little, you not even you not even around me at this point. Got you. Yeah, that that makes sense too. Cause I, I, I word is man, you about your business and you a businessman and you and you you know the analytics. Okay. So it, it it all makes sense. You gotta be you have to be aware of who you surrounding yourself with. <laughs> And if you don't got the right team that's not for you and for everybody, then obviously it's not going to work. But let me ask you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. I was going to I was gonna ask you. I was going to say you was J-Rock at first, right? Yeah, J-Rock. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> you had to, you switched it to J-Rocker because J-Rock from my city. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. yeah bro, I had a. That shit kind of hurt my soul a little bit, bro. I was a little, you know what I'm saying, a little young whippersnapper, and I fucked around and caught one on the TV, and this was like, this is way before the Kendrick era. Uh-huh. This is a long time ago. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I had seen J-Rock on a record with Lil Wayne. Yeah. Back in like 06, 07. Yeah, in the ghetto, 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 Wow! It's just broken nigga heart. Like, ah, this nigga, oh, even we, we, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Wayne, like, Wayne is like the holy girl of rap to me, bro. Between oh, Wayne, right. Eminem, and Jay, I hold them niggas up. You know the little Mount, the Mount Rushmore, right? Yeah. My route, my my Mount Rushmore got like five, six heads on. It. And, I don't and, know how much the real Mark were. Well, Wayne up there. I think the real Mount Rushmore got what five about four or five. Okay, cool. Yeah. My greatest song I got my Wayne is in my route, my Mount Rushmore of rappers, bro. Wayne. Okay. Wayne. Yeah. You feel me? Uh -huh. So to see that is like oh, I gotta I gotta go back to the drawing board. So I I'm fucked up at the time because I'm like, hey, what the fuck? That's what that's what my whole life. You feel me? I think about this shit. My granddaddy don't even call me by my real name. My granddaddy called me J Rock, bro. My mama. Oh, that yeah, was damn bro. Like, no shit. You feel me? This shit, I'm just since a baby boy type shit. So it's like, damn, what the fuck am I about to do now? Like, I'm like, shit, we about to have to go back to the drawing board. So I had a couple names that I was playing around with that still had my name, you know, in it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, that's too long. Nah, that ain't in it. What if I add a J Rock? Like, damn, that shit sound nice. I would call a couple of my niggas up real quick, like, hey, bro, how this sound? They're like, yeah, that shit's straight. I'm like, fuck it, it is what it is. And just went that way. Right. Just took like that, bro. I swear to God, I ain't, I ain't lose no sleep over none of that shit. That shit did, that shit did hurt a little bit, though. You like, damn. <laughs> you like, think about that shit. I was making songs and shit. So all my songs said J Rock in every fucking song. Dang, man. So you, it's almost, it's almost like you got to start over because people would probably, did, depending on what bro. you got out, people was, yeah, that's wacky. I, 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 I had get to redo it. my whole catalog. I had to redo everything. But on a good end, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? It was like, all right, but I get, it was a chance for me to reinvent myself. That's how I looked at it. So it kind of worked out, is what you're saying? Yeah, it did. It, you know, it grew on me. Then after a while, people really started calling me J Rock. Like it, it caught on, and you know, the yeah, niggas in the hood, the streets, the hood, they still call me J Rock. Though that shit ain't gonna change. The people that really, if somebody, hey J Rock, you like, oh, he really, yeah, know yeah. They, if nigga call me J Rock in the streets, like nigga, like now, you know, so they call me Rock or some shit like that. Then they, they nine times out of ten, they, they know me. Cause don't nobody, they only call me that. You know what I'm saying? Or they call me Fat Boy or some shit like that. That's how you know if a nigga really fuck with me. They call me Fat Boy before. But, but, I, but yeah, you feel me? That's a trip. So you got okay. So you got you got Wayne on your Mount Rushmore. You got Jay Z on your Mount Rushmore. You got uh, Eminem on your Mount Rushmore. Who else you got? Shit. That's funny. You said Eminem too. I want to ask you about that. Yeah, <laughs> coming from Detroit. Mm-hmm. So you got Jay on my route rush more. Yep. Drake on my route much more. Uh-huh. Drizzy on my route much more. I mean what's the same person? Wayne, Drake, J M. Oh, 
Oh shit. I'm torn because I ain't gonna lie. Uh, you ain't putting blade on there? No, cause Blade ain't living, and he like Tupac. He he like a. I can't I can't put Biggie and Tupac in this because I feel like and Blade is. Yeah, okay. they don't count because they <laughs> they they like icons to me. So they like it's Rob Merchmore is my favorite rapper. Just living and shit. You got Bad, my understood. Yeah, so understood. I'm talking about the people who still you know what I'm saying kicking. You know what I'm saying, but understood. He like he I don't, don't know. I, I don't know, bro. I. Kendrick different, bro. <laughs> you ain't never lied about that, boy. Kendrick boy different. Cole. The boy, the boy Cole, Rocker. I ain't gonna it's lie so crazy you. because I honestly feel like, see, this the whole thing, though. Like, dog, I ain't Kendrick different, bro. Because it's like, I want to add him, but if I add him, I got to add Cole. Uh... <laughs> I think you feel me. I ain't gonna lie, bro. They like to me, bro. They you feel me? They are. They. I think them two. They the. They are. They are the 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 newer version of the of a Jay Z and Nas, in my opinion. Oh, bro, I ain't gonna lie. They like a yeah. They the new. They like the new generation of that though. Yes, that's you what I'm saying. They like, like, if the new, a, like if I had a new, like if I had a new, like if I had a new class, like a newer. Mark Rushmore, them niggas would be at the face of that. Oh, yeah, okay. I got you. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take that. You feel me? Yeah. If I had a whole, I would have put them damn near in there because they're they the leaders of the new school. This you is know correct. what I'm saying? They're the leaders right. of the new school, so I kind of want to highlight that. But when I'm this route, my, this is route, this Mount Rushmore and me is just like to me is if I feel like I feel like overall, like artistry. How I look at my influence from because everybody, I'm like Jay Z, mm -hmm. a hard ass rapper, bro, a yeah. fire ass artist, bro. Yeah, but me, I'm more keen to it, more I'll grasp on to his businessman mentality and how business savvy he is, and just the way he go about shit. That's what would cling to me more on him. Okay. It's cool that the nigga a fire ass rapper, but he's like not only he's just as good as a businessman as he is an MC. So I think that's what I kind of like admire about him. Understood. Like, you and me yeah. both. I think I think nowadays that that's his staple. That's what the world know him as. It's crazy to see how he transitioned from one of the dopest rappers to 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 to, to one of the top mogul slash black businessmen, and people look at him and they respect him as that. You know what I'm saying? That's a trip to see. But you know what tripped me out? Is you coming from Detroit. I, I, you know what's crazy, bro? Because even the Detroit rappers, I watch interviews and I see certain things. But I never heard a Detroit rapper say Eminem was on their top. Yeah. That that to me, that's it's a little bit different because it seemed like did Eminem, what was Eminem, did Eminem have a big impact on Detroit like that, or what was it, or it wasn't? See, man, you got to think about this, bro. You got to think about, like, how, okay, so, like, how can I put this? That's just, just a touchy, like, it's touchy because Detroit is a motherfucker, bro. We are, Detroit the type of, okay, so. This where it's kind of hard for me to break it down because it's kind of confused. It ain't confusing. It's just that was a good question. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can put this in. There. Mm -hmm. All right. So me, I'm an MC. Righteous. All right. So like I can sing. You know, I'm a rapper turned singer. Understood. I'm a rapper that just happens to know how to sing too. Can carry a note. Can harmonize. And okay. I, can, I was to be able to do both, but in all actuality, I'm a I'm dangerous with the bars. Like, nigga, this shit's serious. You're an so, MC first. Yeah, way first. Like, a true one, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I still snatch the microphone out of nigga hand and freestyle, nigga, and fuck the party up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I'm still that type nigga. 
Okay. It's, it's, it's deep down. It's hidden. You feel me? I'll pull that nigga out when need be. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's understood. Understood. <laughs> but that's so when you like that, when you MC, like you you going for lyrics outside the box, things that are different. If you didn't listen to M, if if you if you uh, if okay if, if you so young that you never knew who Eminem was, I can't fault you for not saying he the best rapper alive. But if you at least old enough to have been able to catch this nigga in somewhat of his prime mm-hmm. of his music, you would understand like this nigga is. One of the holy grails of fucking rap, bro. This nigga lyricism, wordplay, vocabulary, like mm-hmm. everything is unorthodox out of this fucking world, bro, and on a whole nother planet. <clears throat> so coming up, I, I was studying him. Right. You feel me? So that's that's a little bit different for me. I don't know, I don't know everybody else's background. Some of the Rappers that may be a little bit younger than me, you know what I'm saying? They, they like like the young niggas that's like 19 and 20, you know what I'm saying? They, they chief Keith is the holy grail to them. Righteous, righteous, right. Although and I didn't believe Keith is he chief. That yeah, guy, that nigga the goat, bro. He the mm-hmm. goat drill, bro. Yeah, there would be no Chicago drill rap scene without Chief Keith. Bro. But I get what you. I hear no. I hear what you're saying though. I hear exactly what you're saying because they didn't it's get to live in that time. Just, yeah, and it's just I'm I'm different. Like I look at shit differently. Like my influences is MJ, Fab, Jada Kiss, you yeah. know what I'm saying? X, you feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, Cassidy. Like, yeah. Cassidy, um, that was Cass- one of my I I studied him like a, like he was a fucking professor. Cassidy used to kill a battle scene too. What? <laughs> what? When I was in high school, bro, listen, bro. When I was in high school. Niggas could not fuck with me on that battle and shit. <laughs> hey, so you and was- this ain't no cap. It's documented shit, bro. And if anybody said that shit, I still rip your head off to this day. Y'all already know it's so me. Y'all heard it right. Yeah, anybody won't smoke. You think he capping about this first? Bro, I think I'm bullshitting, but I, I ain't did this shit in so long. The crazy part about it, but like back then, bro, I was on that. You I was on that, that smack DVD wave. I was on that. Glued in, listening to shit. I was on that. So when I, you know, what I'm saying, I came across dog. He was different. So you was calico got, before calico. I wouldn't even. I ain't even gonna go into that nigga. That nigga <laughs> beast. I ain't even gonna say all of that. I ain't even gonna say all of that because calico a beast, and I fuck right. with calico. Right, right. Oh, I, I, I was nice as fuck though. Like early on, and this, the, I, I just, I had to steer away from that bat, rap, battle rap and shit because you get, you get, you get labeled. Mm-hmm. I want you to know me for my artistry. I don't want you to know me because I can spit some bars. I want you to know me because I can actually make a great song. Don't right. take that for rap for battle rap because I'm a battle rap fan. Right, you feel me? I just right. know that I've seen battle rappers get labeled. Even that, I don't feel like they should be labeled. I feel like they should want be able to do whatever they want to do when it comes to music. But I, I see that they get labeled a lot. So I had to kind of like step back from that and just focus on giving out good, great quality music. Understood, because I, I think sometimes, I think did you say that in the interview, bro? Your, your whole your whole concept is is being a complete artist, and not I believe sometimes the battle rappers you get so caught into that world, or you get caught into that lane, and then when it's time to make an actual song, it becomes difficult, or 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 the rapper don't know how to make a an actual song. And I feel like you can have the dopest battle rapper ever in the world. And it's always puzzling to me, like, damn, he can put these words together so cold, but why he can't put a song together? It just never made sense to me. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you what one told me, bro. It's easy as hell to write a verse, bro. It's, right? it's, it ain't easy to write a hit record. You ain't never lied. You know what I'm saying? It's I me. I take pride in being able to make singles that have the opportunity to become platinum records. That's what I take pride in. You know right. what I'm saying? I I want I want to drop that shit. That's that's timeless. Like my brother, that shit is timeless. Timeless. That shit gonna that shit gonna play for a billion years, bro. They never gonna not play my brother, bro. Cause it's relatable. It's, uh, it's relatable, and it's and it's 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 felt, bro. Like. 
it's so crazy. I'm not surprised that it touched people the way it surprised because, bro, if you knew what type of mental state I was in making that shit, my cousin sat there. Fry when I make some. Listen, my cousin sat there and watched me in the studio. He crying while I was recording. Damn. You know, both in that bitch, nigga, crying, nigga. I was... And you in there just getting off. Nigga, niggas <laughs> wiping my eyes and shit. Right. <laughs> right. Shit, right. shit like, right. run that shit back. Right. No, but for real, though. Mm hmm. So it's that's a whole nother. So you feel me? Like get your heart into the shit. You can't eat, man. Heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears, bro. Everything that's in me, everything I am, is in that record, bro. Because I honestly feel like I lost a big part of what I've been doing for a long time, bro. You feel me? Like when you got a nigga that's right beside you, who you feel like gonna be right beside you every step of the way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You lose time right before your success. Mm -hmm. And you get to start feeling like, damn, who the fuck I'm a ball with? It's like, damn. Sometimes a lot of people don't know. We do a lot of stuff. Some people like, we do stuff not just for us. It, we do a lot of shit for our loved ones that's around us. You know what I'm saying? So Everything we, I do for my loved ones. Girl, exactly. I ain't gonna lie. I never... I never not once in my life wanted to be a millionaire just for myself. I always right. wanted to be a millionaire so I could take care of my family, put them in a better position in life, and then put my friends and my associates and people that I know that's been supporting and get them a better opportunity in life. Like, that's how I always look at it. So I feel like that's why God put me in this position because he know where my heart is. And I, I agree with you totally, bro. And I, I feel like that's one of the reasons why you have to be aware of who you placing yourself around and who's in your circle because when you look at it like that, when you you're not you you sacrificing yourself to take care of all your loved ones and and everybody else. So it's like I can't afford to have nobody around that's just gonna bullshit and lollygag and not take advantage of what I'm doing in a positive way. Because there is a certain way to take advantage of you know it is a certain way to take advantage in, in in a positive way. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Yeah, if I give you like this, this I'll give you an example on what mm -hmm. like, I was just telling my men's mm -hmm. like I, I've been getting recently I've been acquiring jewels from businessmen and trying to put my insert myself in positions that's gonna allow me to be successful and mm -hmm. to grow. Right. Or you are who you hang around. So I'm I'm putting myself in position to be around some motherfuckers that can teach me something so that I can sit. Mm -hmm. you know but I was just telling my man, it's like, this rap shit taking off is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. I said, but I don't want niggas to think that when this shit get to a point to where we finally start really eating, that I'm going to just be giving money away. That ain't about to fucking happen. Right. I'm going, you going to work. We going to work. We going to get you a product. We going to get you a service. We going to get you a brand. We going to get you something to push. If you give a nigga money all day, all he going to do is spend it. If you teach a nigga how to get money, he going to always have money. I want to set that type of shit up for every nigga that's around me. So at the end of the day, if I ever fall short, I got other millionaires to count on. I ain't the only nigga rich. I ain't the only nigga up. You feel what I'm saying? I want to build everybody around me. You can't build it. You can't build nobody around you if you consistently chilling out and you're not, you're not investing into them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I peep that shit. I be, you know what I'm saying? I peep like, that's how Ross be moving. That's how a lot of niggas moving. If, if they really, if you really want to create wealth, if you don't move like that, the motherfuckers going to run you dry. They going to run you dry and then you going to... I ain't getting ran dry. They get they mad all the fuck you want. <laughs> hey, you look, look, Rocker, that's that's the thing, bro. Family, friends, and all of that, man, you can't let them run you dry. And that, they, they say if, if you teach a man how to fish, he can feed his family forever. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's a, and, and I feel like that's a big deal. And some people always say, Oh, he changed since he got this. He changed since he got that. Is it that he changed or did you change? 
I'm gonna tell you what it really is. I'm gonna give you because I'm all because nine in the outside looking in, I'm on the inside looking out. Now. Understood. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you what the real is. That fame shit and that money shit. Now nah, I'm when, when it come to me, that shit mm-hmm. didn't change me. It changed the people around you. Understood. Because the people around you no longer feel comfortable and don't know how to approach you no more because they feel like your new position in life is pulling them further away from you. Hmm. That type of shit turned into envy. That type of shit turned in. You got people who see your success and trying to, instead of say, can, is there anything I can help you grow? They immediately want to start taking from you. Oh, I need you to do this for me for free. Oh, I need you to do this for me for free. Oh, I need you to do this for me. I need you to do this for me. I need you to do this. Can you do this show for me? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? You feel what I'm saying? You get to having a whole lot of that. First of all, bro, I've been busting my ass investing every motherfucking dime I've got for the last four years. So right. this is what they don't know. This is the shit they don't know. They they see the glamour and glitz. This is the shit they don't know. So and they don't see the work behind it. You mean to tell me I just spent every dime that I got for the last four years, bro, to get me to this point where I'm at right now? Mm-hmm. I invested that much into myself. Right. And you want something from me, but you don't feel the need or necessity to try to eat with me. Mm. You want me to do something for you for free off of my hard work and how I bust my motherfucking ass. Mm. That's the type of shit that start happening when you start seeing some success. And I ain't gonna lie, that shit how you fucked up, especially a nigga like me. I'm, I'm family oriented. I'm about my people, so I love my people. You know what I'm saying? That's just me anyway. Ain't, ain't anybody tell you that? Like, oh, that ain't Jay. He don't play about his family. He don't play about his friends. You know, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Right. Like, so to start seeing, so to start seeing people being removed from my life, it's hurtful. Because, yeah, that shit hurt. Hell yeah, I'm on, like bro, the like two like the week that my brother blew up, bro, and went viral, bro. Like yeah, you know, I tell you, I cut off so many people, bro, in that first month. That fast. They wasn't for me. Damn man, they wasn't for me, bro. That that fame shit, bitches, old bitches, all type of shit, old hoes trying to get back in you. No, you been blew it. I don't even know why you about to do. <laughs> <laughs> You know you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, shit like that, bro. Right. I don't, look, I don't want to hold you up too long. I know you got stuff going on. I'm in Cali, and I know you three hours ahead of me. So, but I, I need, I got to ask you, what you, what do you got coming up? What are you, what you working on? Because I know you like to drop more singles than anything, but you working on an album, huh? Yeah. I ain't a lie. It's album I got for you. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's hot. <laughs> but put it like this, bro. It's probably the this probably some of the best fucking music mm-hmm. that you gonna hear okay. from a nigga that's not, <sighs> bro. This shit different. Bro. What's the name of the album? Um, Pulse of the Culture. Wait, what does he call say it again? The pulse of the of culture. The culture. Oh, okay. All right. I got you. You got any features on there? Uh yeah. I got features with Michia Baby, which is mm-hmm. uh well, AK and Michia. She from Detroit female artist. Uh feature from artist named J Five, he from Detroit as well. Mm-hmm. Um feature with Big Flow Peas. Um he from Detroit as well, feature out of him as well. Um that's pretty much. I think I might have. I'm not sure. See, this time I really I had a few features because they they complimented what I had going on. You know what yep. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't put people. On, I don't do features just because the motherfucker want to do a feature. Like I put a person on the song because I hear them on it. Because it, it makes sense. sense. It gotcha. makes sense. And they gotcha. hear it. Yeah. Sonically, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you feel me? And you can hear. I hear them. You know what I'm saying? I write shit and I hear a motherfucker like, oh, such and such belong on this shit. You feel me? Got you. I, I reach out, you know what I'm saying? And they'll be up there. Hey, but it's one thing I got to ask you before you go. Because you just said, and I forgot, you said Eminem is your favorite artist. One of them, for sure. How did you feel, like, what's going on? How do you feel right now, what's going on? Because you got some people that feel like 
Royce the five nine is always more so protecting Eminem anytime somebody says something. And I know Benzino just did an interview, and you know he he expressed his feelings about how he felt about Eminem, and then Royce the five nine jumped in to defend Eminem. And you got some people that's like. Why is this black man caping for this white man to go against another black man? What's your take on that? Are you familiar with what's going on between them? I've seen a few of that. Uh, I've seen that. Mm-hmm. Some, I guess some snippets or whatever at a whole little uh, altercation. You know what I'm saying? But Right. <clears throat> I mean, bro, I don't know Royce personally, mm-hmm. but... I follow him and I listen to him and I be very educated. Mm-hmm. Um, very smart. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, I'm going to just be real with you. That's his mans, bro. Right. Like, what the fuck do I right. You're not about to talk crazy to me, bro. I don't think my man's not about to get on your ass, bro. Um, Whether he's white or black, that don't even matter. They both from the city. They both from Detroit. Get He's both from this bitch. You feel me? So you not about to, you know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, I mean, look at the, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? I feel like you not about to do that. Understood. You not, not about to, you not about to talk about a nigga like he on got niggas that really love him too. Get what I'm saying? I, I That's get how you. I look at it. He just standing up for his homeboy. Don't it, the color serious. ain't got nothing serious. to do with it. No, you not about to talk crazy about none of my niggas. You know what I'm saying? You just, it's just, that's just what it is, bro. Like, I, I don't look at it like, first of all, Royce is a millionaire. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Royce, too. Well, shout out to Royce, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Royce a fucking goat. Like, nigga, right. he, regardless if you listen to his music or not, bro, the influence that he's had in his hip-hop and his whole lane and, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got a fan base. That's what people do feel to realize. They're like, oh, we don't know him and you know, no, you know how many artists is that we I have no idea who they are, bro. Never heard of them, never seen them a day in their life, bro. They have they got a million, million views. Yeah. Millions <laughs> of followers, bro. Especially millions in today. Views, bro, just because you don't listen to this person don't mean this motherfucker don't got millions of fans that's listening to him. You got you right about that, especially in 2020, 2021. Well, you know, it's 2021 now. That is that that is prevalent. Like, it's so many rappers and artists out here, bro, that got millions of views on YouTube and get never heard of their ass ever. Never, bro. And you be like, yeah. damn, this dog hard. You yeah. feel me? Like, I run across new people all day. Sometimes I play my playlist on, on uh, YouTube. I got a little, you know what I'm saying? They, YouTube can link me up to a whole bunch of artists. So I didn't hit my playlist and I end up getting hit to some niggas I ain't never heard of. Right, right, right. From, from the whole other side of the country. All on the side of the planet, bro. Mm-hmm. They, they over there, you know what I'm saying? It's like that, though. Now, let me ask you this, bro, before we wrap it up. What is one thing you can leave, a positive message you leave to the youth or anybody that's just trying to come up and make it, man, or anybody from Detroit or just anything? What would you tell them? If you're really trying to make it, bro, and this is this is in business, or you want to be an artist, or you want to be whatever you want to be, the number one thing you got to do is invest into yourself. Mm. Invest into yourself. Pay for that studio time at a decent studio. Pay that 50, 60 an hour or 70 an hour. Mm. Go, in there with your, go in there with your music already ready. You know about heart so that you ain't got to waste your studio time. Make mm. every dollar count for you. Make every dollar work for you. Get on that platform, whether it's big or small. Mm. Don't let it be too small because you want to outreach, but get on that platform. Get on pay, pay for them placements. Get on spot. Now you have to invest into yourself. Pay for those videos. Without visuals, your music ain't gonna pop. So you gotta you gotta invest in that. You gotta fuck with these videographers. You know what I'm saying? Right. Build your team, but you gotta invest in yourself and don't give up. If it's really meant for you and you really got that shit, now if you just doing some shit for a hobby, bro, and this ain't really what you cause this rap shit. It'll make a nigga who ain't really for it give up for sure. Mm. For sure. You ain't really cut for this shit. You ain't built for this shit. You can't. You can be down for a minute to to make sure that you up for the rest of your life. If you can't make those type of sacrifices, this ain't mm. you. Mm. Yeah, I heard what Jay Rocker just said. 
Now, Y'all got to really invest into yourself, bro, and believe in yourself. Get rid of that fucking self-doubt. That shit held me up for years, bro. The self-doubt. Yeah, don't self-doubt yourself. You can do anything you put your mind to it. And don't just say you want to do some shit. Actually start executing. Actually start doing it. You mm. say you want to do something, write it down. Put a plan together. Strategize and start executing. Implement. That's how you do shit. You can't, people talk all day, but if ain't nobody doing no fucking action, ain't no work getting done. You heard what Jay Rocket said. You heard it here first on the Bro Show, man. I just want to say thank you, big bro, for, for for doing this. I appreciate you so much, bro. I'm a fan of your music, man. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this video, and then I'm going to DM you if there's any parts you need me to cut out once I'm done editing it, big bro. I'm going to send it all to you. Then you let me know, and then I'm going to put it out there, man. But all right, then, I'm going to go out here and link it to my, uh, my link tree and Okay. Drop me a couple of I'll post it. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you, bro. Can you tell the people where to find you at? What's your social media yeah. handles too? Yeah, man. You can find me right now on uh on, on IG at J Rocker Music. That's the ad sign and J R O C A Music M U S I C. You can find me on YouTube. Just search J Rocker Music is my channel. So you type J Rocker Music, my channel should pop up. Uh, Twitter, same thing. J Rocker Music. Um, TikTok, J Rocker Music one. Okay. You know, so it's just J Rock the Music. My website, www.jrockamusic.com. Uh, we will have merch on the way. We're about to actually, uh, I actually am about to get ready for the My Brother uh, merch release. So, my Brother merch release. You heard that. He got the My yeah, Brother the merch that, mm -hmm. I didn't actually uh, collaborate with Foreign Fortune Clothing, so I'm okay. actually about to be the first artist um, to have a collaborate clothing. Um, some collaborative clothing pieces with that line. So, okay. And that's gotcha. a line, that's a home based line out of Detroit, Foreign Fortune Clothing. It's a big line out of um, Michigan. You know what I'm saying? So they got like three, four stores. They actually popping, going crazy. So, oh, shout out to them, bro. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to, to the whole family. Well, y'all heard it here first, man. This your boy, bro, man. We signing out. I appreciate you, Jay Rocket. And uh, hey, look. I got your line too, bro. So I'm gonna hit you. You know, I'm a produce. I'm a music producer first, bro. So I probably got some beats for you, man. For sure, you got that shit. Slide that shit to yeah. me. I, I definitely check that shit out, man. You know, it's all love, man. I appreciate you having me, man. Oh no, not a problem, man. Bet I appreciate you, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it. Then I'm gonna once I edit it up, I'm gonna send it to you. So it probably give me like a a week and a half, bro. Then the whole thing will be yeah. out there, bro. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate you. One love, big bro. One love. All right, signing up.